so Big Quiche, about two weekends ago, uh, AEW yep. came to Las Vegas, double or nothing pay-per-view. So um, Edge had a match against Malachi Black. And, uh, man, um, I was there in person. I took a little field trip. And yeah. uh, your brother from another mother, we're talking about Kavika. Uh, he made his uh, return to pay-per-view. And uh, he came not only uh, the show, he came from underneath the ring. And he was able to come out and help out Edge against the House of Black. And Edge would prevail and win. And there was Gangrel on pay-per-view in front of thousands of people, in front of the whole world, holding it down with Edge. The first time the Brood made a reunion on uh, television in over 20, 30 years. Yeah. Um, did you see any? Did you see any of that? I absolutely did. How, how can I miss that? A sucker went viral all over the place. It was so good to see, you know, Kavika Gangrel. You know, the world knows him as Gangrel, the Vampire Warrior, the leader of the Brood. I like to say, the sure. leader of the. And it's, it was good to see, you know, David out there on national TV. You know, uh, he's one of the hardest working cats uh, that I know in the industry and still going on, you know, every week. This guy is out and, and doing the shows. But, it's you know, that's where I got this song from, Late Night Early Flights. It was from David just seeing his post, hashtag Late Night Early Flights. And... Uh, you know, to see David on TV was it was real good. You know, I I, I love the fact that you know how they featured him coming out and you know man get a couple of his finishes in. And I, I was going to hit the screen if I seen that somebody was going to stand up and not not sell David's finish. But when David put him down and then you know they all went home one two three, it was nice to see you know them two hug and uh, you know Ed showed the respect to Kavika David. And you know, raise his hand in the squared circle. So, you know, hey, I'm assuming, and I'm sure, just by hearing the crowd reaction to uh, uh, Gang Grill, I'm assuming that possibly, you know, AEW they want to do some good business uh, to be able to bring back, you know, the brew. Uh, they, you know, yes, this, he's a veteran. He knows it. He knows this stuff in the, you know, in his sleep. And let's just hope, you know, uh, let's just hope that this won't be the last time we see Gang Grill on national TV. You know? Yes, sir. Now, take us back uh, to Too Cool versus uh, The Brood. Because I know yeah. you guys had some some matches out there. Do, uh, do you recall any of those matches? Do any of those matches stand out between Too Cool and The Brood? Oh, most definitely. Like, a lot of times they had that show Sunday Night Heat uh, before Monday Night Raw. And they would pre-tape uh, these shows here. And then going to the live show of Monday Night Raw, so we would probably be the ones to, uh, you know, work together. And uh, sometimes they would put us to close the show, and sometimes we would have, they would put us to open up the show uh, wow. to be able to people for ratings and uh, a viewership. You know, so they would our chemistry amongst Brood and with Tuku and Rikishi was just a match made in heaven, man. It was just poetry in motion. You know, you got like the crews, the vampires, like the Lost Boys, and then you got the hip hop with the, you know, with the big cat. You know what I mean? And it uh, it was so easy to work against those guys, you know. And uh, uh, the spots, uh, the chemistry, you know, it was just it was meant to meant to be booked together. And uh, you know, David, to me, I've always felt David as a as a main event player. You know, yes, because he was like, you know, he's like the leader of the crew coming out in the middle, the cool fire coming through. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, when he starts to break out on his own, you know, uh, it just didn't. I felt the company didn't book him the right way, you know, because he could have been that guy just to, you know, have those type of matches on TV where, TV where he's just squashing people. David's entrance could have been an entrance similar to something in the mixture of Undertaker and Bray Wyatt, I kind of see. Yeah, absolutely. You yes. know what I mean? I'm yes, thinking. sir. And so, but that was a type of character, like Gang Grill. Like, that character, there's so many ways that they could have went with him on that character. And, you know, it just, uh, 
you know, after the brood. And then, you know, when David took off by himself, I had no idea. I, I didn't see him too much. And then just, you know, start to see him on, uh, you know, a few independent shows and signings. And, you know, he still looks great. Man, I think he looks even better today. Yes, sir. You know? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. But, yeah, so, you know, David, if you're listening, I know I love you, man. And, again, man, you, you're one of the hardest workers uh, in this industry nonstop. So take care of yourself and try to get some rest, my friend. Uh, yeah, you know I love you, too. Yeah. And there it is. You know what? And I got to say, uh, one of my best pictures that I took absolutely uh, is of you and David together. We were at a barbecue in uh, – it was at a fan's house. His name was Mean Dean. Uh, yep. he, he, Ely, I don't know if Ely has that picture right up, but uh, there it is right there. Boom. Look at that. I wow. took that picture. That picture right there is probably my favorite picture of you guys uh, together. Uh, it was it was a great day on their it, man. But that right there, both my trainers minus uh, Black Pearl, Reno, I know why. Uh, that's one of my favorite pictures right there because, I, I, you know, I love you guys. And uh, the, the the Love stuff, I, yes, sir. The the stuff I've learned outside of the ring has really made my life better. So that's when, I, in my opinion, that's how you gauge a great professional. Not just a wrestling school, but your trainers. If they can teach you to handle uh, life outside the ring as well as inside the ring, man, then you got yourself some solid cats. And I'm looking at two of the most solid cats in the game right there: David Heath and Solafa Solofa Fatu Jr. Right there. <laughs> Yes, sir, Thanks. Big Keith. Yes, Come sir. On, I know you're busy. Uh, we will uh, tap in again next week uh, once we return back to the studios. Fans, we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep taking your questions. Uh, man, uh, we appreciate you guys all tapping in weekly to the Off the uh, Top podcast. Uh, Big Keith, as always, do you have any final words? You always remember this. It's free to be kind and always, always smarten up. And I'm out.